Hey everyone, Audrey here from Pandemonium. Today we're going to be doing the review on the Max Oak Battery Bank. I'm going to be taking you back to the property when I first got it, which is about a month and a half ago. And I just wanted to be able to use the product first to see how it handled. And I've used it for about a month and a half and it's been working great. Although I will say the charging on it with the solar panel I got is not efficient enough or strong enough to um, actually charge it in one day. So I would suggest a larger solar panel. I'll show you what I did. But first, I want to take you back to the property. And this is a flashback of when I unboxed the unit. What we do here is go back, 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 back. I have received something and I'm going to do an unboxing today. It also is a paid promotion. A company by the name of Max Oak that do portable power stations has sent me um, one of their portable power stations and also a solar panel. This one is a 240 watt hour, 1000 watt inverter built in, but I'll go over more of that once I unbox it. Let's get to it. So I have my trusty unboxing tool, which is my sharp kitchen knife. I think I'm going to unbox the power station first. I might not even need the knife. Let's see. No, I don't think I do. Not for this one anyways. Awesome. I believe this is one of the biggest portable power banks that they do carry. Okay. Let's see what this is all about. Uh. Oh my god, this thing's heavy. Oh. Yeesh. Oh. Okay. Seems very well built. I like the casing. Nice colors. A blue and a light gray. There are the AC outlets on this side. The fan is built over here as well. On this side, they have the monitor, some USB ports, and also a DC plug. And this is where you plug to charge it. Nice. All right, let's see what else came in the box. Came with two power cords. This is to plug it into AC. And this one here is to plug it into the solar panel. It has the Anderson connectors which are nice and waterproof. There was another box. Let's see. Okay. This is the 110 for the unit. So the DC, this just plugs into the solar panel, which I guess we can go ahead and get the solar panel unboxed. Camera down, camera down. Comes with a warranty card. This product number is the EB240. Before I unbox the solar panel, I just want to cut the power on to see what it's at. Press and hold. Actually, it has a good charge on it. One, two, three, four bars, and five is full. But I still want to charge it all the way up before I start testing it. So yeah, let's get that unboxed over there. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get this unboxed. I do need my knife for this one. Seems like it's very compact because it is a 120 and I have a portable 100 watt solar panel and it's fairly large and heavy. This one seems like it's not. So let's see what style this is. Oh nice. So this is the compact and it's more like a briefcase. Mine's a briefcase too but it has the hard rigid solar panels where this one seems to be much newer and a better technology. All right, these are the clips, I believe. Now I have to figure out how to open it. Why can't things be easy? Uh, let's see. No, no, no. Mm. 
guess you should read the instructions. Okay, where's the damn instructions? Okay, I was looking for the instructions. It's clips. You think it would be easy? Oh, that's lovely. Japanese. Is that Japanese or Chinese? Oh well. Okay, so there's no instructions. I might have to figure this out for myself. It feels like ah, oh, there we go. Ah, see, you just push down there and it comes out. Oh. Well, that was a little complicated. All right, so it just unfolds. Oh, nice. So these are the mono panels. I have the poly on my RV and they're good in low light situations. These are more efficient as far as size wise. It takes up less space, but they're not as good in a uh, cloudy or shady situation, but I'll be in the sun because with this it's portable so I can move it around. So this will work. Awesome. I like the size of it. So it does have built-in stands right here. There's another one on this side. We're propping it up. And I believe these are the cables. Yep, this is where the cables are. And you hook the other cables that I got with it. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and set it up and get it charging before I start testing it out. I do want the battery to be full. So I had only seen two when it was folded up, but it actually comes with four support stands. The good thing about the MC4 connectors is they're pretty much universal and you can use it with other solar panels if you decided you wanted to hook it into your system or get a bigger panel, you could do so. But I believe they do sell the larger panels as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in right here and let it charge. Let's see. Yep, it's charging. So it keeps on going on and off. I think it goes through cycles. It's ringing in 92 watts right now and charging it. Warning, keep power station out of direct sunlight. I put this box in front of it so it casts a shadow, keeping it out of the sunlight. Oops, that's not gonna keep it charged if I stand in front of that. All right. That unboxing was done at the property and like I said, I've had it a month and a half. Now, my situation is different. I do have a lot of gadgets. I am a power-hungry person. <laughs> I require a lot of power, and I have used it on certain things like my e-bike and also my water pump. I'll show you that outside, but I do want to connect it to one of my friend's R-Pods. Susan and Candy have an R-Pod, so I'm going to connect it to that. We're not going to try the AC, but we are going to try everything else in there, the microwave, also how it runs the R-Pod, period. And yeah, so let me show you some of the things I've run it on. So this is the solar panel that came with the battery bank. It's 120 watts, but it takes several, several days to charge it with this. Um, because it's one of their larger units, so this isn't efficient enough to charge it completely. Uh, it, it'll take like about three to four days depending on the sun. We do have this 200 watt foldable panel and this works much better. Like I said, the other one was 120, this one's 200. So usually if it's nice and sunny and we start early, it will charge it in about two days. You have to keep in mind when I'm discussing this that I'm talking about using it as a portable system where it's not plugged in when I'm using it and I drain it down all the way completely and then that it takes about two to three days with the larger panel and about four, sometimes even five days with the small panel. So, and that just depends on the weather, but you can keep the system plugged in or the solar plugged into the system while you're using it, that's definitely a more efficient way because it's bringing in power just like any RV solar system. You know, it brings in power as you use it. It's more efficient. You keep the batteries topped off more. But like I said, I'm using it as a portable unit and this is me draining it down and that's how much time it takes to recover back to full. Another thing to keep in mind is it is the winter season and the sunlight isn't as long as if it was summertime. It gets dark about 5 p.m. so you have shorter days and even my RV, my lithium batteries in the RV are struggling because the sun's not high in the horizon and 
my panels aren't working as well because they're flat on the roof. With these, at least you can adjust them to the sun, and that is better. But still, they're short days, and I haven't tested this in the summer. I'm sure in the summer where you where it doesn't get dark until 9 p.m., that it will do better and charge much quicker. I use it as a portable, and as a portable, it's not plugged in at all times. I guess I could have a solar panel out here charging it while I'm using it. That would be more efficient way of running it. And right now I have it hooked to my transfer pump because I'm running low on water and I carry around spare water. And this transfers it from the jugs into the RV. I also use it to charge my e-bike, which is 48 volts. Now this will drain the battery down, but if you keep it plugged in while you're charging, like I said, it's more efficient and it's charging as it's also charging the bike. Now with all my DJ equipment that I have and lights and everything, it runs it very efficiently for several hours. I think I can probably do a set which is about eight hours of music and lights and it has no problem. It will drain all the way and then I have to actually um, charge it back up and this is at night so I don't have any solar to charge at the time so that's when it takes a couple days to charge it back up. It's another overcast winter day so I took it off the solar panel because like I said I want to test it on the R-Pod tomorrow so I've got it hooked into the power I've got my generator on this thing which is the electric 110 will charge it pretty fast within a couple hours. I think about three hours it's at um, 40, 45% right now. So on AC, it's saying it's bringing in about 215 watts. It should be done in a couple hours and then I'll have it to test for tomorrow on the R-Pod. Done a little bit of our own research on it and looked up the specs and stuff. And do you wanna help me go over those specs? Yeah, yeah. So the one thing I really like about it is with the Goal Zero, the, um, what is the other one, the Jackery, they have limitations on charging. Um, I believe you can't go over like 24 volts on either one of those. Um, with this one, you can go up to 68 volts and I think 500 watts. Is that correct? Yeah. The, the AC adapter itself puts out 42 volts at 200 watts. Right. So that's why it's charging so fast. I had to turn the generator off so I could record this really quickly. I'm going to cut it back on so we can finish charging that. And like I said, it is winter time. So, and we have small solar panels. That's why we're having difficulty charging. But this is not always the case. Like I said, you can have a solar system on your RV and charge it that way, that would be the best option to have. And they don't limit you. You can actually hook up um, other solar panels to it. It doesn't have to be from their company. Beep. Sorry, we're at Rady's um, birthday bash and he had to ask me a question. Anyways, back to what we are talking about. You want to give some of the specs? Yeah, yeah. Someone on Amazon had answered that question. How, you know, how's, what's the charge time, what's the compatible solar panel? And their answer is, their suggested working voltage has to be greater than 20 volts. Open circuit voltage is less than 68 volts. Mm -hmm. The maximum output current is 500 watts. Right. And then they just say charging time depends on the sunlight, duration of sunlight, etc. If you connect solar panels in parallel or series, we suggest you use the same brand model. Right. So, like I said, I like that they don't limit you like the other banks do. Um... And it's just, um, if you get the right setup, and like I said, you know, we're, it's winter and we're struggling here. Even my RV is struggling, which has seven lithium batteries in it. But, you know, I just like how the specs are on this specific unit. And it's a very powerful unit and not that heavy. I think it weighs, what does it weigh, 48 pounds? Yeah. 48 pounds. So that's uh, considerably light. Yeah. He has the Goal Zero and... 1400, which is just slightly bigger 14, than half. Right. And it weighs 42 pounds. And it weighs 42 pounds. But so like I was saying with the other ones, he can take 500 watts for his, but that is at like 20 volts, which is a 12 volt system. Anything below 20 volts. Where with this one, anything below 68 volts so you can actually hook a solar system to it as long as it's below 500 watts and also below the 500 or 68 volts
We still have to test it on the R-Pod tomorrow, but my review on it is that the weak link is the solar panel, which is really not the company's fault. The unit itself is, like I said, a pretty amazing for the size it is. And I've uh, come up with something that I might do is find a 48 volt panel. It does have the MC4 connectors on it and the larger wire, which is rated for higher voltage and wattage. So I can connect any panel to this, which came from the company. It has the connector. I'll probably find a larger solar panel that I can charge it with. Maybe something I can put on top of my trailer or just have it as a portable one. That would be kind of big and bulky. We'll see what we can find online. But that's the weak link is the solar panel. So I'm gonna see what I can find and hopefully I can find something to upgrade it to. All right, we are taking the unit over and we're going to try it on the R-Pod. Right here? Right. R-Pod, I don't know what they want. Uh, the cables are usually in the back on the other side. Oh. The, the plug-in, the shore power. Panel? Yeah, I've got the adapter. Okay, because I was gonna say that's just the solar panel right there. Right, oh, and this is Candy and Susan. They have a channel. What is it? Beastie's Travels. Beastie Travels. So go and check them out. Beside you. Yes, this is the beast. <laughs> and so we're going to test it out on their R-Pod and see how it goes. We're getting it plugged in. I brought over an adapter. So that way it plugs into the 110. Or actually... Does she have everything off in there? I think so. It is registering fully charged. Awesome. Yeah, just whenever you're so have some time, let me know. this is our setup. We have the 200 watt solar panel and also the battery bank. That way it's getting power. And we've got it cut on. Crazy dogs, crazy dogs. Okay, we're gonna go inside and do you wanna cut on all the lights real quick? Okay, well, let me turn. What is that? Okay, so it's it's accepting the power now first. Oh, okay, sure is. So, so is everything running? Wait, first? We got the microwave, so your refrigerator's running, right? Yeah, but it's on propane, so we can switch it to battery. Okay, let's switch it to battery and see. And I'm going to go outside and check and see. Okay, the issue that we had is the converter was off, so we cut that off because that's like a 40 amp thing, and it's pretty powerful. So we do not want the converter on because all it does is it'll charge her house batteries and we went ahead and cut the ac off because we're not going to test that out and also the water heater which is gas anyways i believe isn't it gas so, or electric mm -hmm. so we don't want to test those we know those won't work but the rest this is main and then these are the outlets and the microwave that's what we really want to test okay so the first thing we're going to test we're going to heat up some water we want to just set that two minutes and see how it does All right, it's running it. All right. Hey, Holly. So we are gonna actually test the unit on my rig. Okay, the things I don't wanna test is the converter, which is this one, and then the AC I definitely do not want to test because RV ACs are not efficient at all. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and cut the inverter on. And is it draining anything yet? Nope, zero. Okay, I'm gonna walk inside and let me know. Okay, well the microwave is on. I'm gonna cut some lights on. And let's cut this on too. Is it draining anything? It ain't draining anything. You sure you got it plugged in? Alright, I have all the lights on and it's barely even registering. But you know, all these are efficient. They're LED. I don't need all the lights on for this. Now I'm going to turn on the microwave. Let's do reheat. So that'll run for three minutes. Uh, all right, so we've tested it multiple times on two different rigs. It cannot handle being plugged in. If you, I'm going to test the microwave by itself and see. But what I think the problem is with this one, where I have a 1,000 watt pure sine wave inverter in my coach. And the reason why this works is because it has a surge of double, which is 2,000 watts. 
and this, I don't think the surge is that high. I think it's only 1,200, so that's why it's not handling it. So this is another Power Hungry equipment right here. This is my hair straightener. For all the women out there that use hair products, I'm turning it on. Okay. So, this one, luckily, I can set the temperature. It's 365. Is it running it? Oh, it's starting to go up now. So, it's at yeah. 89, 90. Okay. Well, it hasn't reached full temp yet. Yeah, see? It's increasing in temp until it's completely heated. Okay, it reached temp, which is 385. I'm actually going to increase it to 425 is usually what I use it on my hair. Okay, so it definitely works with the hair straightener. Okay, next we're going to try a hair dryer, which a lot of women use. So I'm sure you want to know this for all you women out there. Let's see. Okay, I'm going to try it on low fan. And it's on low temp right Oh, this is, that's cold. Okay. This should be warm. Huh? 420. 420? Okay, and then I'm going to turn it up to high heat. It's not tripping it? Oh, it's working on... So it's working on high heat and low fan, so... Ooh, yes, that feels lovely. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to cut it up to high fan and see if it works. Nope. Okay, so you can run this on high heat, low fan. Or actually, sorry, yeah, low fan. But you cannot run it on high heat and um, high fan. Which is fine by me. I can, that, that'll that work for me. Oops. Okay, so we're going to cut that off. Let's test out something else. Since I was testing out the hair dryer, I thought I would test out this little space heater. Now I know this is like 1500 watts at full blast, but I'm wondering if I can run it on a lower fan and lower heat, because uh, that would work as well. I'm gonna go ahead and cut on. Okay, it's power. Oh, no, we don't want high heat. Oh wait, okay, the heat, I'm gonna turn down to eco. And the fan, we're gonna turn, oh no, okay. So back to eco. So it's running on eco right now. Let's see what it's pulling. It's pulling about 500, so right under 600 watts right there. Well, it's increasing because I feel the heat just cut on. So it's staying about, it's less than 700 watts on eco mode. So if that's the case, 700 watts, it's a 2400 watt hour battery. That would be what, three hours, four hours? So yeah, no, actually three hours would be 2100. So it would be right over three hours. Then I could run this little space heater, but now that would deplete the battery all the way down. But you know, that's not bad. I love this little space heater. It actually feels really nice. It's blowing out some good heat on Eco. I use this when I'm in RV parks or anywhere I'm plugged in. Instead of using my onboard furnace and using the propane, I use this instead when I have free electricity or actually it's not free because I'm paying for it at a park usually. So yeah, it's staying right under, it's 682 watts. So like I said, I could run it for three hours plus. I've taken this back and I've pulled the wire out. I'm just going to test this microwave directly plugged in. It's supposed to be a 900 watt microwave, but you know, that doesn't mean that's what it pulls because there's other components like the turning table. So by the end, it might be pulling 1200, which is too much for the unit. Let's test it out. Plug straight in. holding at 1180 okay so plugged into the RV and this plugged into um, the plug back there it doesn't work it throws the breaker but just plug straight in it does work awesome because I was gonna say my other one's a thousand watt and it, it runs this that's why I have it where I can push it back and get the plug. All right, it ran a full minute 
pizza reheat cycle, no problem. It definitely can run the microwave. It's just when it's plugged into the RV, there's a lot more going on. So it brings it over its surge point. So if you run units by themselves, it seems to work better. Okay, next we're going to check and see if it can brew a cup of coffee with a K-cup. I believe this is about 900 watts as well. 770. 770 watts? It's what it's pulling. Okay. Starting to heat up the water now, I hear it. Okay, there it goes. It went through the water heating cycle. So it should have dropped. What is it now running at? Zero. Zero? What? Oh, okay. So now it's just dispensing the coffee. It's already went through the heating cycle. So it obviously can run this K-cup. And you can brew regular coffee with this as well. All right, there it goes. Nice cup of coffee. Awesome. We have it hooked to the 200 watt solar panel. It's completely charged. Like I said, if you charge it as you use it, it's definitely more efficient. You don't have to wait, but I do use it for my DJ equipment and it does awesome, but it will drain the battery completely down. And this is usually at nighttime, so I don't have solar to charge it. So I have to charge it the next day. Right now we're gonna go ahead and plug the bike in and see how many watts the bike uses. For those people out there who have e-bikes. And like I said, you can keep it plugged into the solar. So it's charging it at the same time. It's charging. 67 watts. I see it from here. Yeah. Not much. It would be about 5 amps. Yeah, so this would be a great way to charge your bike if you can keep it plugged in and it's nice and sunny. So it shouldn't drain down the battery at all. I actually have two laptops. This is my daily underneath. I know it can run that, no problem, because I have the DC plug for that. Now, this is my editing laptop and it takes a lot of power. It is very power hungry. So we're going to test it on that and see. Because I know this thing can use up to 15 or 16 amps on... 110 so we'll see so what we're gonna do is bring up a program that uses a lot of power which is the editing program that's usually when it goes up to the 15 plus amps and i'm gonna see what it's so right now it's at 90 watts it just dropped back down okay hold on let me actually run a process oh it is using about 100 watts. So it's not doing much. Usually it uses, um, with my other inverter, the, the fan cuts on, but this seems to be handling it pretty good. It's up to 120 watts. So yeah. Hmm. All right, well, it's running this laptop. All right, one more thing that we want to check is the Christmas lights, because I have tons of Christmas lights in here, and they do use a lot of power, so let's cut that on. All right, Christmas lights on. Let's see what it's using. Oh, about the same thing as the laptop here, about 100 watts. The only thing that I don't like is it, um, with the Goal Zero, you can switch and see how much amperage you're using. With this one, yeah. It doesn't, it just shows you specifics. The input, the DC, and then the AC, what it's using in um, watts. Okay, now we're gonna test my Xbox One. I particularly don't like this system because there's an update every time I turn it on. But anyways, I did do an update. It's been running for about an hour and it's still at all bars, it's not showing it's done any much, but it only runs 60 watts when it's at idle and a game's not playing. We're gonna test it out now with a game and see how it works. Okay, let's see. Okay, so right now, it's running at 122 watts. Skip, skip, skip. 
when the game is actually running, it's taking about 102 watts. And I've been running a lot of things on it. I made a cup of coffee. This has been running for an hour. And it hasn't um, changed the battery level. It's still showing like 100%. But I'm sure it's below 100%. But all the bars are still there. This battery bank is a 2400 watt hour battery. So it is a very large one. I'm sure it's very capable of doing a lot for a long periods of time. Like I said, I can run all my lights and DJ equipment for hours on end at nighttime. I thought, what does it run? Like about six hours or so? Oh, at least, yeah. Yeah, at least six hours. So I know it's a very capable machine. And I do have something that I'm going to run, but it's going to be a separate video. I installed... Um, the most efficient air unit that's out there, a window unit that's out there right now. I haven't shown that video, so what I'm going to do is, sh is do a flashback to that specific um, install, and then I'm going to test this battery on that window unit that's supposed to be really efficient, and I'm going to see how long it'll run it um, not plugged in and probably also plugged in. But that's for another video. My review on this unit so far is that it's very capable. Like I said, the weak point is obviously the inverter and also the solar. Um, if it had a stronger inverter in it, it would probably run the whole RV. But you have to actually plug in things. And I think that's what it's made for, is just plugging things in, um, not running a whole RV. But I am glad to see that what it can handle, and I'm very pleased with the product. And like I said, this is a paid promotion, but I'm just giving my honest opinion on this and just checking to see exactly what this unit can run, and we've seen, so. But I do plan on doing more with it, and I will show y'all and bring y'all along. So I want to thank y'all for hanging out with me. Hopefully you enjoyed this unboxing and review of the Max Oak Blue Eddy 2400 watt-hour lithium portable battery bank. Awesome. See you next time.